If you're still listening to Hillsong music and listening to Hillsong preaching, stay tuned because I want to unpack the docu-series, The Secrets of Hillsong, that I've been watching on Hulu recently. And it is also out on FX, a channel that is on cable television. So if you're still listening to anything Hillsong, you're going to want to stay tuned to the Doctor Matters podcast that starts right now. Welcome to the Doctrine Matters podcast, a tool to help believers rediscover true biblical doctrine and to help them understand and live out their faith in their homes, in their churches, and in their communities. Thank you for listening to this episode. Let's get right to it. Well, if you've got your coffee or a drink of choice, or maybe a snack, just settle on in for this episode of the Doctrine Matters podcast, because we are just going to have a conversation about some things that I have seen when it comes to Hillsong, the music, the teaching, the preaching, and all things Hillsong. Maybe if you think of Hillsong, you think of the music, Hillsong United, Hillsong Young and Free, Hillsong Worship. Maybe you think of Brian Houston, the pastor of the mega church in Sydney, Australia, or maybe former pastor of Sydney, Australia's Hillsong. And you may even think of Carl Lentz. And uh, we're kind of going to talk about all of those things here on this episode. And as I mentioned in the intro, if you're still listening to Hillsong music, stop. Just stop. This thing is even a greater mess than I ever could have imagined when it came to Hillsong or when it comes to Hillsong. So let's just have a conversation about it. So I'm I'm four episodes in. That's all that's been put out so far. And if you have the FX channel, whether you have satellite cable or YouTube TV or something like that, every Saturday night, I believe, it looks like two more episodes come out. I could be wrong in that, but I do know that two episodes were on the other night back to back that were new. And then the next day on Hulu, both of those episodes were available. So if you have Hulu, you can watch it there as well. So I have been watching it on Hulu. I watched the first two episodes and then the last two episodes I recently watched. And, and man, I can tell you that Hillsong is in a mess and has been a mess for quite some time. I've told you often that you should probably run from all things Hillsong. And after watching this, there was even more to Hillsong that I even could have imagined. So let's just kind of start off with some of my thoughts. I've got uh, roughly five thoughts here from uh, from watching this docu-series. And uh, it is a docu-series, meaning multiple episodes. It's not one long, lengthy documentary. Uh, but a docu-series, and I've just kind of written down some notes here, just uh, some, maybe some one-word one word things or maybe one uh, small sentence here and there to kind of capture what I've thought as I have watched this unfold. And first and foremost, it, you really, in the first couple of episodes, you get a real heavy dose of Carl Lentz. Uh, Carl Lentz is talking about the affair that was heard around the world. And one thing that I really noticed about Carl Lentz in this is that he didn't really want to take full ownership of his sin. He wanted to kind of blame shift. He wanted to look back at his childhood and there was a molestation that happened. He didn't go into detail on that. There was a lot of crying. There was a lot of uh, needing to be liked, needing to, be affirmed in in who he is and who he was. Uh, So he did a lot of blame shifting when it comes to taking ownership of his sin. Uh, He did more blame shifting than anything. Uh, He did say that uh, some of those things led him to do the things that he did. But uh, one of the, the things that really struck me was he seemed to be playing the victim as it relates to Hillsong as a whole. 
So if you're if you're blame shifting your sin and then you choose to play the victim, then you are really going to find yourself in a hole when it comes to biblical Christianity, because Christians need to take ownership of their own sin. I hate to say this, but we all sin. I sin. I've had to take ownership of my sin in the past. I've had to apologize to people. I've had to uh, go to people that I've broken their hearts and I've broken them by the choices and that I've made and the things that I've said. And I've had to apologize and ask for forgiveness and take full ownership of that, regardless of what happened in my past, regardless of what I think I need in my life. That doesn't excuse our sin. And it seems to be that Carl Lentz has tried to excuse his sin by the barrage of things that have happened to him, his personality, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, he seemed to then shift into being a victim of Hillsong and the leadership structure there, especially as it relates to Brian Houston, who is the, 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 the I guess, the church father when it comes to Hillsong. Uh, and they do talk a lot about that and how he wanted to be better than his father, who was also a pastor. So he wanted to do it bigger and differently and and things like that. So he's kind of the the father of Hillsong, the patriarch of Hillsong, if you will. Uh, so it, it even seemed like he was really playing the victim. Uh, but one thing that really struck me is, is we've all heard about Carl Lentz and his affair and how he told the lady, don't Google me and things like that. And, and, and one thing led to another and it just happened. But this was not the first time. And it came out in the docuseries. Uh, his wife caught him in compromising situations with uh, kind of a, the, their nanny and uh, just a lot of things, man. There's a lot of a lot of hurt there, a lot of sinfulness there that happened in Carl Lentz's life. And I'm not here to bash Carl Lentz. I'm not here to um, make myself seem to be superior than he is uh, and exalt myself above him because I am a sinner as well. And if not by the grace of God, there go I uh, as well. So um, I did see that it was just kind of a lot of, you know, bringing Carl back into the forefront of this and bringing his family back into the forefront of this, or at least his wife, not his kids. Um, and they really talked about how he was a, a celebrity pastor to celebrities and uh, the, of course, Justin Bieber and and Kevin Durant and th- and people like that. And um, but that was the the biggest thing about Carl Lentz so far is just how blame shifting led to playing the victim and not really owning his own sin, and then finding out that there were multiple affairs. That was shocking to me. And um, he laid it all out there. I got to give him that. And if you don't know, Carl Lentz has been uh, hired at Transformation Church by Michael Todd who is another false teacher, uh, and it came out that Carl Lentz said he is not in any type of preaching role, but in kind of a a supportive role, and uh, just to kind of help along uh, Mike Todd there at Transformation Church. But um, just some things that struck me there, and that's not the biggest thing that that was crazy about this. And, uh, you know, this is not a Christian association that is putting out this docuseries it's vanity fair uh, i mean right there in the name vanity so you know this is a worldly uh worldly group that's putting out this documentary about hillsong and and what one of the things that i fear is that many people are going to watch this and think this is christianity like this is what christians do this is who they are and that is far furthest from the truth because we know that Hillsong, if you're a biblical Christian, if you stay within the, the the realms of orthodoxy, you know that Hillsong teaches false gospels. They teach word of faith, health, wealth, prosperity. And if you didn't know that, if it seemed to come across as subtle, then if you get into this docuseries, you'll see that the health and wealth and prosperity gospel is huge and has been for many, many years with Hillsong Church. And this is something that is not um, not swept under the rug. It's open, and uh, there's speaking in tongues. There's give and sow your seed ministries, and all sorts of things like that. So that is another one of those things that were kind of was kind of shocking to me to see is that this isn't just a uh, a church that is disguising itself as being biblical, but it is actually very open and charismatic and word of faith and prosperity. 
And that's one thing that I didn't really know. I knew their theology was wonky. I knew that they didn't have a good grasp of biblical theology, but I really didn't know that it was as charismatic as it is. So that was one thing that, that another thing that really just struck me about the docu series so far. Although uh, this is not a, a a Christian organization, again, uh, putting this out, uh, I'm just afraid that people are going to look and say, "Well, this is what Christianity is," because there's a lot of abuse that has happened within Hillsong, a lot of cover up of things that have happened. And I must confess, I haven't finished watching episode four yet. I'm halfway through it, and in that is where Brian Houston has been accused now of sending some very inappropriate text messages to another woman, and the leadership there covered it up for 10-plus years. And he was also, after being drunk and taking some sort of pills, was in another woman's hotel room for 40 minutes. And he even said that they were in there for 40 minutes. And uh, in both of these circumstances, they had these women sign um, confidentiality agreement saying that they won't tell anyone. And, and, and ultimately this got out and, uh, it is, has, is being investigated and, and shown as cover up and things like that. Uh, and how they just covered up these things. It's man, it's just shocking to see all of the things that were lying underneath the surface of what appeared to be just a, a church with some bad theology. Right. Uh, but there was so much there. Uh, one of the things, too, that I saw on there is um, it's a very progressive type of, of docuseries. It seems like that they're saying this is not what true Christianity is, but the, the writers and the, the people that put this together are really wanting to try to shine a light on progressive Christianity. You've got girls that have gone there to wanting to be pastors, and then they got hurt, so they're not a part of that church anymore. They didn't get their they didn't get their way. They didn't become a pastor, so naturally they they're upset about that. Uh, there's a very social justice, Black Lives Matter push in in pockets throughout this docu series, which is also troubling if you know anything about m- number one women pastors. And then social justice issues like Black Lives Matter and things like that. You know that this is problematic at best. So um, you have that kind of that push coming in from the side along with, hey, this Christian organization is a big is a big failure. It's a big uh, dumpster fire. So look what look world what Christianity is. But let's also push these progressive ideologies because this is what the church is really supposed to be about. That's kind of the the flair I'm getting from this docu series as I'm watching is you kind of you kind of pull back is what they're trying to do is pull back the layers on what this church is and replace it with what they think church should be and that is this progressive social justice uh, homosexuality kind of a thing that that presents itself as the church as a matter of fact there's one person or multiple people in there that. Um, were gay and they said, well, this is not how church is supposed to be. So they're, they're pushing these ideologies. And if you're not careful, people can take that and say, well, that's not what this is. This is what it should be. And they will start to take those ideologies and run with them and find themselves believing in some things that aren't true. So you have uh, the Carl Lentz thing uh, you've got that whole debacle going on. You've got um, the social justice thing, and they're, they're, the race card was even played in the midst of this in the first couple of episodes. Like, you know, there's racism that, that Hillsong didn't represent black people and things like that. So you've got that whole that whole dynamic in there as well. You've got the progressive Christianity f- kind of coming in from the side is what they're wanting it to be. And then, uh, of course, you got the abuse and the cover-up that I mentioned. Uh, they're just uh, abusing people and and uh, spiritually abusing people. And that's a big thing in our time today. And then, of course, there's this whole um, episode, episode number three, that deals with Frank Houston, which is Brian Houston's father, who allegedly um, molested some kids, I believe, and touched them inappropriately, things like that. Very, very terrible to hear of a pastor doing that. And, And let me just say this. I'm so tired of hearing pastors molesting children. I shouldn't even have to say that. Pastors should not molest children. They shouldn't molest anyone. Let me just say that. But um, 
Christianity is getting this name that when we look at this docu series, it's 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 not Christianity. The gospel is not being preached. Uh, the true word of God is not being preached, and uh, the world is labeling this as Christianity, and it is a train wreck. That is the number one word that I have about this docuseries as it relates to Hillsong Church. Hillsong is a train wreck. So there is abuse, there is molestation, there's cover-up, there is affairs after affair after affair by leadership, there is alleged rapes from leaders that are getting the allegations are kind of swept under the rug and they kind of move on kind of quietly. So things don't get handled, but I'm telling you, there is so much more to this Hillsong thing than we could ever imagine. And it's kind of been eye opening to me because again, I knew that Hillsong was, it had, it had its issues. And my church just said, we're not singing Hillsong music because it leads to the teaching. And there was one thing that was said in this, this docuseries that I resonated with that I, that I almost applauded, but come to find out it was a former church member of Hillsong and he actually was a homosexual. He, he outed Hillsong or, or himself and said, he goes to Hillsong church where he sings in the band and things like that. When he was on, survivor or the amazing race one of the two but he was on there with his partner and and long story short there of course you know out in public they have to keep the uh we condemn homosexuality but kind of behind closed doors they're open to it uh but then when it came out they had to deal with this individual because it came out on a such a a grand scale and uh so you had one 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 thing here that says, yeah, we, we're open. We, we love everyone. Everyone's welcome. But then when it gets to a national scale on a bigger, broad plane, they say, no, we're not about that. And then they dealt with this individual accordingly. So they really have uh, two sided coins, one in the same coin, but they're going to do whatever they feel is necessary regarding Hillsong's reputation. Anyway, kind of went on a rabbit trail there. But uh, one of the things that he said, and this should make every one of you that listen to Hillsong music or, or, or sing it in your churches, it should make you pause and really think if this is something that you want to continue doing. This man said that Hillsong music is the gateway drug into their teaching. And that is exactly what I've been teaching for a few years now, is that the music leads to the teaching. Many people say, no, it won't do that. But the truth is, it will. And the man there said it himself, that the Hillsong music is the gateway drug into the teaching. So that alone should be enough for everyone watching or listening to say no more Hillsong music music in my church, in my car, in my shower, <laughs> wherever music is being played. I think it is time to cut it off, be done with it, because Hillsong Church is a dumpster fire, and they need, many people in that organization need salvation. They need to truly repent of their sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get to a biblical worldview and preach the gospel, preach the whole counsel of God, and stop doing what they're doing. Matter of fact, the lampstand should be removed from this so-called church. So I want to encourage you, really understand what your church is doing, what they're teaching, uh, how they're interacting with people. Uh, hold your leaders accountable. Uh, that doesn't mean be rude to them uh, because we have an obligation in Scripture to obey our leaders, submit to them, so their job can be easy, essentially. Maybe not easy, but uh, not be super difficult because of difficult people. I'll put it that way. So think about what your church is doing. Think about what your church is singing because what is being promoted is not biblical Christianity, and what Hillsong Church is is not biblical Christianity. So I would disassociate as far as I could from anything, music, teaching, whatever the case may be, from Hillsong Church, and I would stay as far away from it as I can and find a true biblical church that loves Christ, that loves the Word of God, 
that teaches the Word of God without without apology. And the people there are passionate about the Word of God and love and serve one another. And Hillsong is far from it. Elevation Church, same way. Far from it. So really, if you want to see more into what Hillsong is, find this docuseries. It's been eye-opening to me to see just the how crazy it is and how much there is that, and how deep it goes that is opposite of the Scriptures. And one of the other things that I noticed is Mike Cosper has a lot of parts to play in there. Uh, if you know Mike Cosper, he is uh, the one that did the big podcast of the, the, the downfall of Mars Hill Church with Mark Driscoll. I can't remember the name of that, that big podcast series he did, but uh, I wouldn't doubt if Mike Cosper came out with another podcast related to this. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, just uh, kind of see it being set up on a tee for him. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the Hillsong, the secrets of Hillsong and, and Carl Lentz just went on there, man, and just blasted everything he knew and just, uh, put them on a, on a, just shine the light on their sin and, uh, played the victim and all those things. So man, just I, here's the reason that I'm doing this. Biblical churches matter. Unbiblical churches matter. You need to be out of an unbiblical church and into a biblical church, no matter how far you have to drive, no matter what's going on. And if you can't find one within an hour of your house, start one in your own home. Not just you and your family. Find, just re, preach the gospel. Go out into the streets. Get out of these unbiblical churches that are singing music that is not that is not biblical. That's coming from heretical sources. Stop it. So make sure that church matters to you and make sure that you're in a biblical church because it matters. Christ makes all the difference. As one of our elders says through our Ephesians series, we're teaching through Christ makes the difference. Has he made the difference in your life? If he has, he will not let you stay in a sore, in a, in a place like that in an unbiblical church. He will not let you continue to latch on to unbiblical sources. So trust Christ and get away from those things as fast as possible. And if you are a solid Christian, I would I would say watch the docu series. If you're not, just find some mature people in the faith and let them steer you away from Hillsong Church and all things Hillsong because it is a train wreck. So I hope. Uh, just uh, just the simple fact that you hear how bad Hillsong Church is right now and has been, hopefully that's enough to get you away from that music if it hasn't already. So until next time, I'm going to try to get back on a consistent schedule with putting out episodes and podcasts. Uh, I know there are several listeners on both platforms, both in the audio platform side and the YouTube platform side. So uh, I will get back to hopefully putting this out on regular scheduled days and at least once a week. Now that it's summertime, I'm back. There's a lot of stuff going on, but I can still make time for this every now and then. So uh, glad to be back. Looking forward to whatever's next. We'll see. And uh, until next time, you know, let me know if you've watched the docu series. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about Hillsong and what you think about the docu series as a whole, and and, and if of how it's being presented to our culture. And then uh, uh, I'd love to have a conversation. Love to see those comments. So uh, if you are so inclined, if you've listened this far, if you wouldn't be, if it wouldn't be too much to ask, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that like button and uh, maybe even just say hey i'm here whatever comment you know how all the youtube people say like share subscribe I, I, whatever if you want to <laughs> if not that's okay too but until next time it's pastor steven god bless <laughs>